Well, good morning, everyone. We're going to get underway right on time. I know many of you are still joining us uh, as we uh, have a 10.30 kickoff. So what we're going to start with is uh, a, a few housekeeping notes. Um, so we will commence uh, very shortly in just a couple of minutes with the formal proceedings. Uh, my name is Aaron Wood and uh, I am your host this morning. Um, so before we commence, just a few housekeeping notes. Um, your uh, audio will be muted throughout the process, so please use the, the chat function uh, or the Q&A function as we go through the process as well. Uh, so before we do get underway, and I just want to check that, uh, that everyone can see me, so I'm going to check the, the chat function there and just see that the audience uh, can, can see us okay. Excellent. Fantastic. So we're, we're underway and I just want to say too that it's been a really, really pleasing uh, start here in the fact that we've got uh, over 450 uh, people from right across the sector registered. My name is Aaron Wood. I'll be your host uh, for the conference this morning, the online conference. Uh, for many of you who may have attended uh, ITAC over the last eight years, uh, you've had to put up with my voice uh, and my face there. So the pain unfortunately continues here this morning, but I'm really proud to, um, to be back for this conference. So as I said, over 450 registrations and that's right across the board. So we've got uh, vendors, providers, all levels of government, uh, regulators, ministerial advisory, committee representatives, uh, of course our council representatives. So a really, really good cross section of participants and we're looking forward to hearing not only from our expert speakers, uh, our expert panellists, but particularly from you, the participants. So please utilise the chat function and uh, also the Q&A function as we progress. As I said, your microphones will be muted through the process. Um, please use that Q&A and chat function uh, as we go through. Most conferences you start with, you start with being very relaxed. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet here this morning. Uh, I'll acknowledge the traditional owners in my part of the world, uh, but certainly acknowledge the traditional owners right across Australia with everyone coming in online. But we're not going to let you get off that easy. You're not going to sit back and relax for this conference, this Aged Care Industry Information Technology Council National Forum. We're going to jump straight into some polling questions. Uh, so we've got three polling questions which we would like you to get involved with um, straight away. So you'll be able to, in just a moment, see those polling questions uh, on your screen and we'll, we'll get into those and, and get your reflections uh, on those as well. So the first uh, of our questions, please identify how many business to government B to, D to G systems your organisation in your organisation that have automated interfaces to get to the government portal. And you've got um, four uh, selections there, one to two, three to five, five plus or none. The second question this morning is, my organisation would consider participating? This is a single choice uh, question. Answer one is common industry standard development. Answer two, collaborating in B2G processes, answer three, collaborating in B2B processes, answer four, financially contributing to the industry middleware project. And our final question, our final poll question for this morning before we get underway with today's forum, do you support the development of a minimum data set for the recording and sharing of information describing the functional and clinical assessment of older people for care planning? And that's just a yes or no answer. So I'll give you just a minute to answer those polling questions. And as I said, over 450 participants joining us are here this morning, which is a great cross section of our industry. So we're expecting to get a lot out of uh, today's session. And obviously we'll have a lot of questions um, that pop up throughout this uh, forum. We may not get to all of your answers, but uh, we have an undertaking from the organisers that we will get to all of those questions and circulate those answers to participants after, uh, after this event. So we'll leave those polls to continue and I think we're going to an, uh, announce the results of those polls uh, at the end of the forum. So that's a, a good uh, note to stick around until the very end. But as I said, my name's Aaron Wood. I'm your host for this morning uh, and have been at a uh, host for the ITAC conferences over eight years now. So welcome to the Aged Care Industry Information Technology Council National Forum incorporating the National Home Care 
Group and the CIO Forum. And today's forum is part of the quarterly national forum, forums hosted by the Aged Care Industry Information Technology Council. For those of you who are in attendance who are unaware of the Aged Care Industry Technology Council, they were formed in 2007 by the two industry peak bodies, uh, Aged and Community Services Australia, AXA, and Leading Aged Services Australia, LASER, with the express intent of providing the industry with a vehicle to consider and debate IT-related opportunities to disseminate the lessons learned from that process to the wide aged and community care industry. The Aged Care Industry IT Council is led by Dr George Margellis. He'll be joining us in just a moment to give you a welcome and to introduce today's forum. And we've got our board members uh, online as well. Derek Didrich, AXA, Janine Buckley, the CEO of Ferris Care, George Andreola from Laser, and Brendan Moore uh, from Laser as well. So welcome to all of those who are, are listening uh, online today. The Aged Care In Information Technology Council, which is led by three subcommittees to action the strategic plan to engage specific sectors of the industry and to promote the collaboration and activities focused on the uptake of technology and innovation in the sector. And we've got uh, our current committee chairs who are also going to be joining us a little bit later uh, for um, some presentations and panel discussions. And we've got Anne Livingston, the committee chair of the National Home Care Group, uh, Gavin Tomlins, the committee chair of the National CIO Forum, and Rod Young, committee chair of the ITAC committee as well. Membership of all committees is made up of interested people from the aged and community care sector and research. And today we'll hear more from the ACIITC. But allow me to kick off today's proceedings with a little bit more housekeeping. As I said, uh, all microphones have been muted by the event manager for the recording of this, which will be made uh, available after this session. If you want to ask questions, as I said, use the Q&A function or use um, the, the chat function as well. They'll be answered and available on the ACIITC website. We will allow maximum time for presentations. The speaker bios will actually be posted in the chat panel. I'm not gonna go uh, through their bios, so please refer to the chat panel uh, for their bios as well. Um, during the event, as we've done, there's some whole questions that we've kicked off with, and we'll announce those uh, at the end of the session today. Um, for inquiries or technical issues, please submit in the Q&A panel for the Secretariat to answer. So if you've got any technical issues, post in that Q&A panel and the Secretariat will get on to those for you. In terms of today's agenda, a bit of an overview uh, for you. The focus of today's event is to provide an overview of the recent activities undertaken by the Aged Care Industry Information Technology Council, including an update on new projects and partnerships, insights into the recently funded project, which is undertaking an environmental scan of the digital maturity of the age and community sector in Australia. As I said, we really wanna get uh, some feedback um, and from you, but also some feedback on the evaluation of the innovation and technology capabilities and the readiness of the aged care and community care industry. We'll hear from Dr. George Margellis very soon, Dr. Isabel Freen, who will provide an over overview of the ACIITC partnership with Digital Health CRC. Hugely exciting work. Um, Miss Anne Livingston, Dr. Kate Barnett and Gavin Tomlins will provide an overview of an exciting new national project benchmarking the aged and community care sector and will definitely leave time for a facilitated Q&A section as well. So to kick us off with today's forum, I'd like to introduce Dr. George Margellis. As I said, he's the Chair, Aged Care Industry Information Technology Council. He's our first speaker today. Uh, and George is going to join us now. George, over to you. Yes, so good. thank you, Aaron, and good morning, everyone. And I hope you're all safe and well in isolation in your homes or home offices. Uh, I want to give you an update today on what the Council has been up to over, since the, over the last 12 months since my appointment as Independent Chair last March. But first, I'd like to thank and commend those who went before me who handed me a very effective organisation to work with, so thank you very much. So over the last 12 months, we have been developing the strategic direction of the Council in line with the changes affecting the aged care industry that we all are aware of. This is based very much on the work of the roadmap that was developed in 2017, which I will touch on later. And we have worked to do some further reviews looking at the recent evidence and research around the use of technology in aged care. And again, I'll touch on that 
a bit later. Uh, we have developed an official submission to the Royal Commission on Aged Care and have had a number of engagements with them over the past year. The Commission has been a major influence on our sector and we've been very active in ensuring the role of technology remains in focus. We have developed a national mentoring project to support up and coming professionals in aged care in various facets. These range from students to well seasoned veterans. We ran a very successful, and I have to admit, very well timed ITAC conference this year at the beginning of March, literally days before they went, the country went into lockdown, with a number of international speakers and local speakers, and uh, I think we have 400 people in attendance. So, those of you who attended ITAC, would have had the opportunity to learn about what we're up to, but those who didn't, today's, today's National Forum is an opportunity for us to keep it up to date. At that event, we announced our partnership with the Digital Health CRC, which is a software is about free and we'll tell us about uh, this later soon. The basis for our strategy is the Technology Roadmap for Aged Care in Australia, which was released by the Council in 2017. It was launched by the Minister of Parliament House and has been downloaded by many people uh, since that time. For those of you who don't have a copy of it, please feel free to go onto our website and download a copy. It will provide you with a lot of information. Last year, we commissioned an update on the evolving evidence base for the role of technology in aged care. And Dr. Kate Barnett will provide us more details soon. And again, that report is available on our website. But for those of you who haven't, haven't got a copy, highly recommend you get on there today and download a copy. And finally, in preparation for next year, we're planning to run ITAC on the 10th to the 11th of March, 2021 in Sydney. So please put those dates in your diary now. I'm sure you will agree, we have learned a lot about crisis management in the last few weeks and seen the rapid deployment of technology into aged care and healthcare. And at ITAC, we will explore these issues amongst more. We are here to work with you, so please contact us if there's anything we can help with. These are the contact details of the Secretariat, and for those who need to contact me directly, then my email address just be on the, on the website as well. Thank you, everyone. We are here to collaborate and work with you all, and I'm open to any questions and answers we may have at this stage. Thanks very much, George. And um, thank you for your presentation there. Just, I'm, uh, I'm interested, it was great to hear about the work of the ACIITC, but um, I think one of the major concerns is enough focus on the workforces uh, of the future and a greater uptake uh, of digital uh, and um, community care in, in terms of the service delivery side of things. So what are your views on that? Are we, are we ready for these workforces uh, of the future at this time or is there more to be done? Uh, there's a lot of work to be done as far as the workforce but again, what we've seen over the last couple of weeks is that we can adapt rapidly when we need to. So I think the opportunity now is there for us to adapt our workforce to be more efficient and effective in the use of technology in the delivery of care. And again, if you go through the uh, report, the roadmap report, one of the key issues we have highlighted is the need for a digitally effective workforce. But um, yeah, I think there's definitely opportunities here now and like I said, the uh, Thanks, George. Um, and some of the, um, the the report you mentioned, the evidence-based report, the, the link to that is now up in the, the chat function as well. Um, so anyone who's interested in, in going in and checking out the, those links, please do so. Um, I should have also mentioned that um, the Twitter handle for this morning, for anyone who's who's sort of live tweeting from from the forum today, is at ACIITC. So at ACIITC. So George, um, in that same vein, what what do you think um, sort of the the top two or three challenges are as we pre we prepare for this sort of digital transformation um, that's going on? Those those top sort of two or three challenges that you see in your eyes. First of all, I think it's, it's workforce education, so providing them access to technology and education on the effective use of technology. Secondly, it's uh, standardisation across the industry so that when we're moving data from one side of the aged care to another or through to healthcare or into social care or into the various facets that our, our clients uh, interact with, there's standardisation of that data. And thirdly, it really comes down to 
resourcing effectively. So not trying to do this at a minimum viable way, but you know, funding in such a way that those who use it are confident technology will work first time, that the network will, will stay up, that the data will get it from point A to point B effectively. So I think those three things are the three things that are essential for us to uh, move forward. Well, we've got um, your, your sound quality is having a few issues there. So we've got quite a number of questions for you, some related to funding, but we'll pick those up um, post the forum uh, so that we can we can get them out um, across to all of our participants. So George Margellis, thanks so much for, for the work that you do and thanks for uh, welcoming us to today's forum. So we're going to move to our next speaker, and that is Miss Isabel Freen. Dr Isabel Freen is the Senior Consultant Digital Health CRC. Uh, and Isabel is going to provide an overview of the ACITC partnership with the Digital Health CRC. This is hugely exciting. So, Isabel, over to you. Thank you, uh, Aaron, and uh, thank you to the HK Industry IT Council for the opportunity to speak to you today. I'm going to tell you who we are, about the work we've done so far in HK, a little about our response to COVID-19, but most importantly, I want to use this opportunity to invite you to engage with the Digital Health CRC to help us to address critical problems facing aged care in Australia today. So think of this session as a bit of a call for ideas. So who are we? We are one of the largest CRCs in Australia, funded by the Australian Government and opening the doors in July 2018. Our Commonwealth funding is used to match industry cash and in-kind funding creating a resource pool of more than $200 million. Our industry partners include departments of health in most jurisdictions, including the Commonwealth, health and care providers, vendors, and agencies like the Australian Digital Health Agency and the Australian Commission for Quality and Safety in Healthcare. The objective of the CRC is to improve the health and well-being of individuals and communities through the digital transformation of our health and care system. We will achieve these objectives by funding research that answers problems identified by our industry partners. This slide is of the CRC research matrix and helps explain where we focus our investment. As you can see, the matrix has four broad research themes and five settings of care. We've also identified a number of what we call flagship programs such as the residential and assisted aged care flagship that extend across multiple research themes. We have a research education and investment committee, which is a subcommittee of the Digital Health CRC board, who is responsible for overseeing all research projects. So in terms of, um, next slide please, uh, in terms of activities so far under the aged care flagship program, we funded a project with Telstra Health and RMIT that will leverage data from Telstra Health's residential aged care system to develop algorithms to provide advanced indication of deterioration in residents. We are about to formally sign the first two phases of a larger project called the Aged Care Data Compare Project with the University of Queensland, the Bupa Health Foundation and the Commonwealth Department of Health. The purpose of this project is to develop a healthcare data standard and a prototype data hub to enable the exchange of resident assessment data amongst residential aged care facility providers with the ultimate aim of facilitating benchmarking to improve and demonstrate care quality. And as George just said, in October um, 2019, um, the uh, CRC established a broad collaboration with AXA and the Aged Care Guild to advance digital health in um, uh, aged care in Australia, uh, which also includes the establishment of a national living lab for aged care. And in March at the ITAC 2020 conference in Brisbane, our CEO, Victor Pentano, and George announced the, that ATAC <laughs> had joined the collaboration, so effectively creating a united front for the sector to identify industry problems it can work on together. Before moving on, uh, next slide please, uh, I just wanted to briefly mention some of the work the CRC is doing or hoping to do in terms of our response to COVID 
because I think this illustrates the speed and the potential the CRC can bring to mobilizing players to work up solutions to a common problem. The first project, the CDAP, the Clinical Data and Analytics Platform project, is looking to develop a national platform to capture and analyze COVID-19 patient data to support clinical decision-making and specifically adaptive trials. This project has been signed now and we expect other states to join shortly. The second project is particularly exciting for this audience. It's point of care risk, risk screening for frontline staff. This project is investigating the use of point of care antibody testing and risk screening for staff in aged care and other high risk environments to support return to work and protection of vulnerable populations. The project is being coordinated by RMIT and Aged and Community Services Australia, working with a number of other vendor and test kit suppliers to refine the project and acquire industry funding. So importantly, a key aim of this project is to develop a national framework to support employers to get their employees back to work safely. And we are actively looking for large employers in other industries other than aged care to partner with us on this national project. The other two projects I won't go into detail, but they are also work in progress, particularly exciting projects. One looking at real time GP data across uh, three states, effectively um, looking at 25% of primary care data, combining that with state health data to understand uh, detection patterns uh, around COVID. And the third one is uh, looking at um, innovative um, alternate, non-traditional, if you like, data sources to try and identify the mental health status of individuals in lockdown. So moving on, moving, coming back to, um, uh, to aged care, uh, I want to, um, uh, this, this slide, uh, next slide please. Um, uh, we're looking now for your ideas and involvement in research projects that will produce the evidence base for digitally transforming aged care. So some of the problems that we've identified are on this slide. Some of them came up on the panel discussion that we had at ITAC back in March. This is a, not a definitive list in any ways, and we really are inviting your ideas. One of the poll questions at the beginning of the um, the call that Aaron called out is, um, uh, you know, we're looking for your uh, suggestions about um, the importance of uh, interoperability standards for aged care. Uh, do we need a minimum data set for the recording and sharing of information describing functional assessment um, for older people? These are the sorts of questions we want your ideas on. What's the most important um, issue that you feel uh, a collaboration of aged care um, providers and potentially vendors and government uh, could and should be working on. So if we just move to the last slide, please. Uh, thank you. Um, so really, this is a pitch. We, we want uh, your project concept ideas. Um, we have funding in the kitty that can be matched with industry funding. So please send your proposals through to um, the HK Industry IT Council, to AXA, the Guild, or directly to myself at the CRC. Uh, these can be simple or detailed concept. The idea of the cooperative in the Digital Health, Health Cooperative Research Centre name is that we work up these ideas together. So please don't be shy. All ideas are welcome. And um, if you want more information, there's lots of um, uh, useful information on the CRC website. So Erin, uh, that's all from me and I'm happy to answer any questions if we've still got time. Excellent. Thanks, Isabel. Um, really informative and just popping up in the chat function, there is the link about the Digital Health uh, CRC. So if you want more information about the Digital Health CRC, then please uh, have a look at that chat function and that'll take you to some more information. Just, Isabel, before we get into some questions uh, about the project and how people can get involved in it, there's a number of you that are asking, you know, can we get a copy of these presentations? Absolutely a copy of the presentations and also indeed this forum itself, the, the, the recording of this forum will be made available uh, after the forum. So um, don't worry, you don't need to take notes on, on all of the um, all of the slides that are coming up. So Isabel, I guess the, the question is just to reiterate, 
you know, if you're um, in the industry, how do you get involved in a CRC project? Do you need to commit funding to, to, uh, to get a project up? Uh, and if you have those project ideas, is there a form that um, that people need to to fill out, or how do they actually get that to you? I think uh, you know nothing happens with no funding, um, and uh, the the principal of the CRC um, and the Digital Health CRC is one of many CRCs funded by the Commonwealth Department of uh, Industry, Innovation, and Science. Is that industry? The, this is research for industry questions, so industry uh, has to have some if you like, some skin in the game. Um, but uh, we recognise some of the challenges facing the sector and one of the, uh, the logic, if you like, behind establishing the, um, the collaboration that we have with the HK Industry IT Council, uh, AXA and the Guild, is that um, if we can work together um, uh, and contribute collectively, we can um, uh, identify the resources and as I said, um, we have a number of um, jurisdictions that are industry partners to the CRC, uh, including the Commonwealth Department of Health, who've been hugely supportive uh, of us. Uh, a lot of vendors are interested in seeing some of the same issues. So my, my first answer, a long way of answering your question, Aaron, uh, would be to say, let's, let's hear your ideas. Let's get some agreement that these are the, the key things that we should be working on together and then we'll figure out how we um, bring the resources um, uh, to, to do justice to the research questions. Right, thanks Isabel and we've just got a, a question um, here from Christine who's asked about getting a copy of the grant funding guidelines uh, and what we will do is we'll include um, that information at the conclusion of this session as well. So those grant funding guidelines will come out again to all participants. There's just a question uh, here, if I can jump back, um, Isabel, regarding the programs of research, this is from um, Greg Alexander, um, are there opportunities for international collaborations for digital maturity and IT impact on health outcomes in aged care? Ab absolutely, I mean, some of our industry partners are overseas um, vendors. Um, obviously, a lot of uh, universities have got um, already got uh, uh, international collaboration. Um, the, you know, the the logic behind the Commonwealth Department of Industry funding CRCs is to build um, capability uh, in uh, ideally Australian um, providers and um, vendors, uh, but also to bring in and establish uh, international collaboration. So. Um, uh, you know, my my answer is uh, let's let's put all ideas on the table. You know what what we've been trying to do with the um, the HK Industry Council and the steering committee that we have with the HK Guild is to um, identify what are the priority projects we collectively should be working up uh, with a view to signing and getting underway in, by the end of tw calendar year 2020. Um, if we could get two large projects equivalent to the aged care data compare project up and running that would be a great um, great opportunity for us you know there's a lot of really important um, debate and discussion and ideas coming forward from the royal commission but the industry um, it councils already identified a lot of the we know what the issues are so we don't need to wait uh, necessarily uh, to be told what we should be working on uh, if we if we feel that there are uh, we can bring the, the capabilities um, and the resources, preferably a bit of cash would be help, helpful, uh, but certainly in kind to some, some really pithy um, uh, projects, um, we'd like to get some of those underway uh, this year. And Isabel, you mentioned there, and there's a few questions coming in from participants around, you know, those issues. The I guess the existing barriers, is, is much of your work going to focus on, on those existing barriers? Um, look, the, 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 the CRC exists to fund research that is a genuine problem raised by the industry partner. So, you know, that's a, a really important message. It's not the pet research project that a supervisor in a university wants to fund that's been studying aged care. It's what are the issues facing the sector? Those, those may be issues brought forward by vendors. Um, you know, when I was at ITAC um, in March, spoke to a number of vendors, equally frustrated, frustrated about um, 
aspects of the the sector um, and the way in which um, they're they're able to work. So we and we've got a number of aged care IT vendors already as uh, industry partners. So I, look, I think um, uh, you know. Let's get the let bring forward the ideas. Put them through George. Um, put them through um, Gavin and the uh, the CIO forum. I'll send them straight through to me, um, and um, we'll we'll feed back through the um, the ATAC um, uh, feedback loop. And I'm thinking, Isabel, um, just to sort of um, go on that same line that that those existing barriers in the interface between. Um, you know, acute care, clinical care, GPs and the aged care industry. Is there any of the, the research that's focusing specifically on the, the existing barriers around those interfaces? Well, um, I, I, I'm not sure if anyone um, on this uh, forum is going to cover that off later, but certainly um, we are all talking, um, working closely with the Department of Health, looking at a number of the interface um, barriers. So some of the projects that have been identified are absolutely around the areas of handover when a resident moves from <coughs> or a prospective resident moves from the community into residential care, potentially between providers. Um, we, the Aged Care Data Compare project uh, will be developing a FAR specification and we're working closely with CSIRO who at the moment are working on a GP FAR specification. So they'll, you know, the, the opportunities for us uh, in the, um, the, the interface between uh, health and care settings to address um, those barriers through standards is, is with us now. And anyone that knows me knows that I've been living and breathing standards in this space for many years. And as far as I'm concerned, you know, this is the time for us to really take uh, advantage of the collective will to, to reform some of the um, the technology barriers um, uh, to to um, facilitating seamless communication. Well, Isabel, um, thank you so much for your time this morning. I'm used to saying a huge round of applause. We'll have to do that semi-virtually. So I'm sure all our participants are, are giving you a clap for um, what is a really enlightening presentation and just that that sort of union between you know good real world research industry collaboration various levels of government really some great things can come from that and uh, certainly you see with the current situation around COVID-19 just how important you know good quality leading edge research uh, collaboration is so thank you again um, to Dr Isabel Frame for your presentation this morning thanks very much so we're going to move uh, into an environmental scan of the age and community care sectors. And this is our um, first panel session. The way this is gonna work is that I'll introduce our first of three speakers, uh, and that speaker will then just introduce uh, the next speaker so that I'm not chiming in between speakers. And then we'll go to a, a panel Q&A session. So again, if you've got questions and they're flowing in um, quite solidly now on the Q&A function, just put those questions in the Q&A function and we can put that to our panellists uh, after the, the next three speakers. So our first, um, uh, our first uh, speaker in this is Miss Anne Livingston, because um, we've got Dr. Pate, um, Dr. Kate Barnett, I should say, Order of Australia, uh, and Mr. Gavin Tomlins in this section. Um, so first we will kick off, as I've said, put your questions in the Q&A. Um, speaker buyers and important links will be in the chat function, so I won't go um, into great depth on, on, their, um, on their buyers in any way, shape or form. So with our next session on the environmental scan of the age and community care sector, please welcome uh, Miss Anne Livingston. Thank you, Aaron. Um, good morning, everyone. My job this morning is to give you an overview of an exciting new project that the aged care industry Technology Council has embarked on. Uh, just by way of background, uh, George mentioned earlier in the presentation, the technology roadmap really indicated uh, uh, a, a number of areas for improvement for the sector. And one of the particular recommendations we made was highlighting the need to really get a handle on benchmarking where the sector uh, is and uh, looking at where investment should be driven. Um, so uh, it is with that recommendation and the work that we achieved both in the technology roadmap and the most uh, recent research project indicating what the evidence is showing, 
So we have been talking to the Department of Health uh, for some time and uh, our colleagues on the line from the Department of Health, we acknowledge that they uh, approached the council in late in February uh, this year and we presented them with a proposal early in March to undertake such a national scan. And importantly, the scan is to look at both the industry, uh, uh, both across residential care and community care as it's funded in its various components, but also to have a look at software uh, from the community. The aged care industry technology council has always taken an important view uh, of the role that the vendor community plays. And many of you would know that we set in home care settings and community care settings. Um, a particular relevant item to, um, to our times with the recent announcement of universal coverage of uh, telehealth uh, is that area of telehealth, which we're broadly defining as our telehealth and telecare sectors. And finally, we're looking and drilling down at those technologies that support safety in the home via a range of smart home technologies. That really was a feature of the research work that we've been undertaking in the last um, uh, piece of work that we did and released in December last year, where we're looking at the role that technology will play um, in supporting people across a range of issues from falls prevention to medication compliance uh, to all those uh, technologies that are, are smart home focused. So our project has a number of key deliverables and I'm going to run through these very quickly. Uh, one of our first key deliverables was actually to uh, put in place an expert advisory team and a project team. So I'd like to introduce you to both of those teams. Um, our expert reference team is being chaired by Dr George Mangelis. Uh, George needs no introduction. Um, he's had a lifetime of interest in the role that technology is playing across care, uh, both in acute care and in um, uh, aged and community care. He's an early advocate for the use of technology and a passionate advocate today. Uh, we're joined by uh, Mr Rod Young and Rod's on the line today. Rod has um, a vast array of experience and interest and chairs the ITAC committee uh, for the council. Uh, joining us today on our link from the United States of America is Professor Greg Alexander. Uh, Professor Alexander is currently at the University of Columbia uh, in New York, but uh, living his time at the moment in Missouri. Uh, Greg's landmark leading research um, that occurred as part of his Fulbright Scholarship to Australia a couple of years back has continued to have an effect on the Australian context. And many of us, like those of us in the Council in the particular uh, chairs of committees and our committee work, have followed his um, uh, study of the effect that uh, technology and the uptake of innovation can have and can play, particularly in respect to quality of service delivery. And also joining us is Dr. Claire Mason. Uh, Dr. Mason is a senior data scientist with Data61 CSIRO, and she brings a range of expertise to this program from her background in research and data analysis. She's worked in uh, related areas in health and community care on similar projects. She's focused also on the workforce aspects uh, of, um, of the future workforces that we require to be relevant as an industry. Claire's also working on similar research in other avenues like advanced manufacturing. We brought together a project team of nine members. Uh, we brought them together because of their diversity and their range of expertise. So I'm joined in the project team by Dr. Kate Barnett, OAM, and Kate needs no introduction. She's been recognised for over four decades for her work in this sector and leading a research agenda. Her landmark re uh, research around teaching nursing homes and the work that she's undertaken with the council over the past four years in um, underpinning uh, a robust research projects for us. 
We're also joined by Gavin Tomlins, and Gavin's going to present later. Uh, Gavin's been the CIO Forum Chair for a couple of years now and is um, providing the project's technical lead. Lisa Kapamagian is uh, joining and has joined our, our team as a project vendor advisor and many of you would know um, Lisa's background over uh, 15 years in the vendor community, uh, particularly interested in the telehealth, telecare space. And she brings a wealth of experience to our team. And importantly, underpinning our team and really leading our team is Georgie Gould, who's organised also today's um, webinar. So thanks, Georgie. We've also put in place an industry reference team or a co-design group, and I'd just like to briefly acknowledge uh, those individuals. Uh, Wendy Flagon, uh, Nigel Fall, Jeff Carson and Bruce Collar. Uh, those individuals provide um, both uh, a lens on our work uh, from um, the point of view of uh, technology and its implementation in the sector, but also a lens on uh, issues for all different sizes of organisation and including those in rural and remote areas and in called communities. So our key objective is to also meet four high level objectives. Um, we've been undertaking an extensive environmental scan and research undertaking in respect to this project. Uh, that we've both um, looked at the five discrete areas, but we've also been looking at mechanisms that are used in other research projects to find the best benchmarking and environmental scanning methodologies we can to apply to our project. We're also undertaking uh, at least two industry uh, consultations. Uh, today was meant to be a consultation full day in uh, Tomsley Precinct in South Australia, but we're here today, a uh, shorter version remotely. We're going to expand on these consultations individually and collectively through the work of the committees of the organisation. But specifically, and what we're going to ask you to really think about participating is, we're undertaking a national digital maturity scan. Um, this will be in the shape of a survey that will be released shortly. And part of this survey will help inform future directions for uh, the strategy around investment in innovation and technology, but also uh, hopefully lead some of the key considerations and our final deliverable will be providing a comprehensive report to the Department of Health, including the key insights that we've uh, gained from this research work uh, and also from several case studies and in-depth analysis we're doing as part of the project, uh, plus some key recommendations for the department to consider ongoing. So the important dates, this is a very succinct and concise project. Uh, it's an ambitious project within the time frame, and uh, the team have been working uh, very uh, uh, succinctly and uh, uh, over weekends since we commenced the project on the 23rd of March. We've got two industry consultations. The next one is planned on the 1st of June, and I hope that all of you uh, will be able to uh, be involved. Uh, we had a cap of 500 today and uh, we've just come under the cap, so uh, no doubt in uh, the next uh, webinar, if we're still in webinar form, we'll be increasing that cap to allow more people to be involved. As part of this project, we're also undertaking a specific vendor survey. Now, this will be running for a shorter period of time during the life of the project. Uh, and we're working with vendor peaks to ensure widespread involvement and uptake of this um, survey. We want to really capture how well placed our vendor community is in supporting the perceived changes and challenges that are ahead of us in really delivering more on the digital front within the in the future. And our project concludes on the 24th of June. Um, so our survey period is running very tightly between the 1st of May. Uh, we're releasing our survey on Friday this week and it will conclude um, in uh, the first week of June. 
So I'm going to finalise with a call for action. Um, the survey is an extensive survey. We're trying to draw uh, out some uh, very um, widespread range of issues and um, positioning of the sector. And we know that uh, it's a very busy time in the sector, but we hope that you are able to take some time to conclude and undertake the survey. As part of an incentive, we're going to put you into the draw of, uh, for two um, full registrations for ITAC, valued about $2,500. And we hope that that might encourage you and your team uh, to be involved in the survey. We'd like you also to provide us with feedback. Feedback about your own research, whether published or unpublished. Feedback about uh, case studies you might have. We're wanting to hear both about successes and failures within the work of implementing uh, technologies and increasing it more innovative approaches to service model delivery and workforce delivery. But we also would love you to promote our work through your individual networks and through your teams. Um, particularly those who've got networks locally uh, to provide us with an a in-depth um, view of the sector. And we'd really like you to attend the next community consultation, which I mentioned before is going to be held on the 1st of June. So thank you for my time today, Aaron. Um, and my contacts are on the my um, aged care community IT council contacts are on the uh, the board there. Um, we really love your involvement in any shape or form, and I encourage you to send us an email. I'm now, now going to hand over to Dr. Kate Barnett. As I mentioned before, Kate uh, has been widely recognised for her work and her uh, brief CV will appear on your chat uh, pane shortly. But one of her many awards, she was recognised um, uh, in the uh, Awards Australia Day as an OAM. So congratulations, Kate, well deserved. Um, Kate uh, has an extensive um, uh, background in working with the council and has been involved in each of our current research projects. Kate's going to talk to you particularly about the environmental scan and the uh, research endeavours. So mm -hmm. over to you, Kate. Thank you very much, Anne. You know, when we started um, the uh, technology roadmap, which, uh, as you know, was released in mid-2017, we faced a lot of criticism from people saying technology is an unaffordable item for the aged care sector. And now, post-COVID, I think we could say that we wouldn't be getting those arguments were we to release a technology roadmap right now. So if I could have the next slide, please, Georgie. The environmental scan for this project will we'll capture some of those changes in attitudes to technology in the sector. But I'll first of all just quickly explain what an environmental scan is for those who've uh, never done one before. Basically, it's about identifying the key issues and trends going on in the environmental context that an organisation works in and selecting those that look likely to shape both their current situation as well as their future and how effective they can be in managing those trends and issues. Why would you do one? Typically so that you can feed into planning from an evidence base and try and be a little bit proactive rather than reactive. And also as in the case with us right now, informing a wider project or initiative. How are we going about this? Well, typically you would search the published academic literature and also what's called the grey literature, that which you can find in any reports on the internet. What we are also doing is taking a lot of information from the number of webinars that are popping up, mainly in response to COVID. I'd like to particularly mention um, the Australian Digital Health Agency and the Digital Health CRC. Their webinars, highly recommend them. That's why I've put the link in there for you. Highly informative. But the great thing about them is that 
we're largely talking to experts who will eventually publish, but by the time that work is published, it will be too late for this environmental scan and for a lot of other planning as well. The other thing that we're doing is interviewing some key stakeholders. We've got a good oversight of the whole environment that the aged care sector is operating in, and we'll be illustrating with case studies of good practice um, how people are managing technology and the impact of COVID on that will also be part of what we look at. Next slide, thank you. So typically an environmental scan would be done by an organisation and it would begin with an internal scan of that um, organisation and then going to the broader external environment. Because we're looking at industry sector level um, and at times aged care organisation and health organisation level, we are focusing on the external environment. Without um, wanting to preempt what our scan is going to be finding, we do know that the disruptive impact of COVID-19 is going to be key because what COVID has done is given people a huge incentive to use technology in the workplace. And that uh, incentive involves avoiding contagion and managing to overcome phys physical distance requirements. And telehealth is clearly the best example of that response. We are also going to be taking into account in our scan that the healthcare sector is already being influenced by its it, by the implementation of the very far reaching aged care reform process, and also by the findings and recommendations of the Royal Commission into Aged Care Safety and Quality. If you haven't looked at their reports, I strongly recommend it. They are already, even before they finish their work, filling quite a gap in our evidence base about the aged care sector. Finally, all of these influences, I'm mentioning them separately, but they're all interactive, so we'll be looking at how they mutually reinforce each other. Next slide, thank you. As well as that immediate environment affecting the aged care sector, it's also going to be important to acknowledge that um, even before the reforms and the changes in aged care and COVID, we had an extreme season of heat waves and unprecedented bushfires. We don't know what the um, long-term impacts of those will be, but all we know is that they will be long-term and that they will not only be economic, but they'll be social and emotional as well. What's been really heartening to see coming out of all of these crises is the value community is showing that it holds for our frontline workers and especially um, most recently for our health and aged care workers. Thank you Georgie, next slide. Um, Anne and George have already outlined that these are the five agreed areas of focus for our project. You can read them on the screen but um, they will also be helping to structure our environmental scan. Next slide, thank you. What we're doing with the scan, the best way to look at it is that it's working at two levels. We're taking information from within Australia, the national level, and also internationally where it's comparable and relevant. We have begun our um, environmental scan with a review of digital maturity assessment research and measurement tools. So those two are being looked at at the national and international level, but also we're looking at generic tools. In other words, not specific to an industry, but looking at how assessing digital maturity. And then we um, have we've already completed this part of the work, drilled down, looking at um, assessments specific to the healthcare sector um, and to aged care, and these have. Uh, informed how we've designed and structured our survey. Next slide, thank you, Georgie. So um, I can tell you that our interim findings from this assessment of available digital maturity measurement tools 
um, is that typically they're generic in focus rather than industry specific. We found um, more for the healthcare sector than for aged care and really only one in Australia for aged care and that's the work of uh, Professor Greg Alexander and colleagues and we have uh, links to their work in our most recent literature review. But, um, Professor Alexander is also a member of our expert advisory committee. Um, so he's also been hugely helpful in helping us design the survey. We found that there are a lot of instruments that focus on individual digital literacy levels, but way less on organisational sector level digital maturity. Where we have found that the organisational sector level um, technology maturity is usually just one component of a much broader survey of an organisation. So this survey that will be undertaken for this project is filling a critical gap in, our, in the evidence base and we can confidently say that for the Australian aged care sector it will be the first benchmark of digital maturity and we hope it will be repeated over time so we can measure progress from this year's survey. And next uh, slide, thank you, Georgie. So, one of the other things we uh, discovered was that the really much better quality survey instruments had a well thought out model behind them and they use different themes or categories to structure those surveys and often indicating the research evidence that had influenced each part of their survey. And so typical themes were things like workforce training and development, policy, infrastructure, cyber security. The other thing about better quality instruments was that they were structured to capture the phases that an organisation will go through as it uh, through digital transformation to a point of maturity. And there's quite a bit of work out there on what those uh, stages of maturity could look like. The other thing, the final thing that is a feature of a good, um, a good survey, a good quality survey, is that they recognise that digital maturity is something that's not only held by an organisation's technology or IT experts, but it is a holistic uh, maturity that crosses different levels uh, and sections of an organisation. Again, our survey has been designed to capture all of these findings. Um, and in particular, we're hoping that organisations will not just have it completed by their tech experts, but it will go across an organisation for input. Next slide, thank you, Georgie. Um, and that's a great way for me to now introduce uh, Gavin Thomas. Thank you. Good morning all. So this is Gavin Thomas. I'm meeting with you today from bright sunny Queensland. I guess my role within the project is I'm, I'm the project lead and with the survey team we've been trying to establish a survey tool or tool set that identifies a series of questions that can go through to establish some sort of baseline. As the name suggests, we're looking at the capability and the readiness of the various aged care sector and within community care. So it's not just a que uh, questionnaire for the IT managers, but for a whole of organisation. And we are looking across multiple aspects. So we are looking at service provider land, as Anne spoke earlier, we are looking at vendor land. We do have focus also within industry and what part it has to play in terms of the government. And also, there is also a heavy focus around consumers and the consumer's families. So next slide, please. Um, from, from the server, we're trying to establish a tool set that organisations can basically use to benchmark themselves as to where they are in their particular journey. So we are looking at developing a particular maturity model, which basically says, okay, based on these answers, you're here at this uh, particular level. As you can see, we are looking at those organisations which might not have a strategy or plan or anything at, at this present point in time and sort of indefined, ill-defined uh, processes mm -hmm. and trying to understand what are the factors that sort of influence them to put them in that particular state. Um, there's questions there to sort of identify people just going through that sort of business as usual, like is it just operational, we're using IT for IT's sake, state? 
And then looking at those who have sort of matured a bit more and sort of have a defined and descriptive process within their IT processes and uh, what functions that they're currently carrying on there. Uh, there's a whole range of question sets there, as you would well imagine, about integration, interoperability. So we are looking at organisations, vendors, industry and suppliers. So we are looking at those business to government interfaces or even still going back the other way, what the government to business interfaces are available and who are utilising those. Um, also investigating through our question sets, what business to business opportunities have been utilised or if this requires further development. Um, I think early on, Stuart Smith or someone might have been asking within the question sets, what is there for consumers? Uh, we are looking at question sets that look at how consumers can engage with the business and how businesses basically, uh, basically uh, engage backwards. Um, and also, is there any consumer to consumer interfaces that are being utilised? And also, I guess, as the ever changing uh, industry happens, we are also trying to investigate that business to business and uh, consumer type situations. Again, um, as Anne and uh, Kate have suggested, we are sort of trying to look at what are the governance and standards and interfaces which are being utilised and what can we go back and just sort of come up with some sort of common standard. And lastly, we're hoping through this sort of survey that we can basically have a look and see which organisations are really truly embracing technology. So not only it's just not a lights on type thing, it's not just a service desk, it's how do we get that value add and how are we looking at the different data, data analytics. Um, the question sets also go into looking into, into the different organisation profiles and what we're looking there is to sort of see maybe explore what different service delivery types are and hopefully from our tool people can establish where they sit within, within the marketplace. We are looking at doing um, explorations of various KPIs around investment in technology. So looking at the work for, workforce ratios around technology and innovation. So as Anne said earlier, we actively encourage you to answer these questions. Um, the survey will be de-identified, so there are no uh, identifying characteristics that will be bound back to the organisation. So we're trying to do a very in-depth survey so we can sort of say, okay, this is what your ratio is, say, IT help desk to the rest of the workforce. Um, what is the dollar investment? Are you in a current operational type phase? Are you in an innovative type phase through your investment? So you can basically do as a bit of a comparison. Uh, we're also delving into what sort of, uh, what does the workforce look, for, look like? Is it all internal? Is it a hybrid mix uh, organisation outsourcing their workforce? What types of workforce situations are they out, outsourcing? So these are sort of indicators which show to us, you know, the capability and the readiness of the organisations to basically evolve with the ever-changing needs of, of technology. Um, we're also trying to get an establishment to sort of see what the actual technology makeup is. Is it mobile devices? Is it a mobile workforce? Or is it just a basically an operational type system around this, this place? Um, the question set, as before, we sort of had a look at those five key areas, but we're also delving down is to the strategic leadership and innovation and how that influences not only an organisation but uh, the industry itself. So we are looking for those innovative leaders. We're trying to see, you know, is it a board responsibility? Is the board taking ownership? Or is it IT focused based actually at this point in time and what's going on? Um, there is a piece around uh, project and governance, basically trying to understand where technology has come and like over the years, you know, is there a proven success methodology? Are organisations following standard processes? Do they actually have the capability in, uh, within house to go through project governance to be able to encourage basic good IT systems and how they're being utilised? As, as was established, one of those key deliverables for, by the governments is looking around the business administration information and the different technology systems. So we have question sets, sets which are investigating um, the, whether there are CRMs, customer relationship management systems in place, and are organisations utilising those? What systems are in place to help with the ACFI funding and how that is being used? One of the hot topics, obviously, within the organisations is understanding what time is being invested around online reporting to the government and also looking at the business to government and the interoperability. We do deep dive to try and understand exactly who has what like robot process automation in place at this present point in time, who is utilising vendor software services which allow them to enter data once and basically be upload. We also are trying to get some sort of quantification as to what the time impost or cost impost is in terms of meeting legislative compliance. 
as well. Um, and basically how we can operate, looking at sort of standard processes and who are looking for collaboration at the moment. There's a great deal of investment going into the sector at this present point in time, where people are sort of do, using multiple solutions. Is there a case for an industry standard type solution with, uh, led by the government? And how can we best represent that? So next slide, please. Um, there were some questions earlier on. We do actually delve quick, uh, around a lot about security and the maturity of organisations and that of the consumer record or the client record. So we do delve down to have a look at who owns the clinical information, what systems are integrating at this present point in time, and also do families actually have access around to that particular information, looking at where we can go around the electronic My Health record and that consumer record and how that integrates back into that particular piece. I think from earlier on, Stuart Smith was raising questions around uh, digital literacy in the workforce. Uh, the project team has identified that as being one of the core foundations and keystones. So there are a number of question sets that are being asked of organisations as to the workforce digital literacy. How do they go about supporting their staff members, not only staff members, but also the volunteers and their consumers on how they can utilise that technology uh, to be more efficient. Um, there are questions there also examining the decision support systems, how data is being used within organisations. So just not a matter of collecting data, but are we doing some type of information at this point in time and doing some sort of predictive analytics and basically capturing type of data. There is a question set around telehealth and telecare, basically within not only residential aged care providers, but out there in the broader community and basically seeing what happens to the consumer. Uh, there are questions basically looking at what it was pre-COVID versus post-COVID response. So we are sort of drilling down to that. Um, there are questions also around the connected community so and the smart home. So we're, we're looking at this from a residential aged care perspective, but also looking within with homes. So looking at what type of sensors are being utilised to detect, to detect falls or do passive monitoring. How are we bettering the lives to better enable consumers within their own home environment? how do we become smarter in the, in the utilisation of that particular data at this present point in time? Um, there is a question set around surveillance and monitoring. We are trying to understand exactly how, what opportunities and challenges are facing organisations at this present point in time around uh, surveillance and monitoring, um, both from a security camera perspective, but also looking at how we can use advanced data in terms of identifying monitoring analytics and basically maybe predicting, say, outbreaks of infection. So obviously with the COVID situation, is there any chance of being able to collect data or look at that sort of herd type of mentality? Um, at this point in time, I'll pass back to Aaron if there's any questions at this point. Excellent. Thanks very much, Gavin. Uh, lots and lots of questions. So um, we've got a very uh, involved audience here. So um, just before we, we're gonna bring uh, all of our speakers up on screen. Uh, and um, and just remove the PowerPoint there so that we can see everyone now. Obviously, apologies. There was a you know, technology sometimes gets the better of us even when we're involved in the technology space. So all of those PowerPoint slides, which were having a bit of difficulty with the uh, bandwidth of the internet, will be shared um, post um, this event as well. So you won't miss out on on any of that. But apologies again. Um, Oz Trade International. Their health team uh, have just said that they welcome the opportunity to discuss potential offshore digital collaboration opportunities for the sector. Um, so again, the importance of these sort of forums is really about the collective intelligence that we all bring. Uh, and that's why um, the council have put, put this on today is it's really about um, that collective intelligence. So George um, and Gavin, you mentioned this as well. So probably Gavin, I'll come to you first, but there's been a lot of comments and questions around uh, residents and recipients, uh, care recipients, recipients and carers. Where, where do they feature in the survey? How do they feature in this research? You touched on some of that, but again, can you just um, you know, t enlarge upon those points around how the customer is being the focus of this as well? So um, thanks, thanks very much, Aaron. So there is definitely a focus on the consumer and how technology is actually enhancing their lives. So um, it's threefold. It's trying to establish what the technology sets are within the resident, whether it be in the room and what technologies are basically assisting. We do have questions around um, the usage of robots, artificial intelligence, and bots of the like to sort of see how they go. We also basically ask questions within a home to sort of understand the consumer and how they have access to their own data 
and whether families can go back in down to, to also maybe if it's a GP or an allied health and how they're actually controlling that data. There is an overarching um, question set or thought process with a great mind to security and who does access around that particular information. And and can I come to you just on that question too around um, putting the, the the consumer or the customer um, first and and just again just enlarging upon those comments around the involvement of the customer in this this process. I guess um, thanks, Aaron. I guess all of our work and um, particularly the National Home Care Group is really uh, just focused on uh, the consumer and what the impact is. Um, I guess over the last couple of years we have been really pushing a research evidence base around the use of technology. Uh, if the technology isn't impactful for the individual at the end of the day, if it doesn't improve quality, we really shouldn't be investing in it. Um, and we should be investing in technology that's co-designed with consumers. So uh, the work that uh, the council's undertaking with the Digital Health CRC, around the importance of using living lab type um, methodologies to develop new technologies is an important aspect. Uh, so we're really going to focus on those co-designed um, technologies, really concentrate on what the evidence is saying about improvement in quality and uh, the impact on consumers needs to be central and um, key to the, this, this story. Uh, and can I stay with you? Because there was, a, again, a couple of questions um, and asking you to highlight again, which additional project members are focused on rural and remote uh, aged care needs and access? Uh, I guess across the board, all of our project members have had experience in rural and remote and regional service delivery. Uh, specifically in the co-design industry group, uh, Nigel Fall, who many would know from a long-term involvement in a small uh, rural provider. Um, and, but also we're using our networks uh, both uh, within the aged care sector, but uh, within other sectors like the Rural Health Alliance uh, to gain some feedback. Uh, we're always keen to have uh, a focus, Aaron. So if the peer person or people who ask that question want to be in touch, we'd love their involvement, their case studies and highlight some of the issues, as well as some of the leading work that rural and remote communities have been doing for years in uh, better uptake of innovation and technology. Uh, we know that in many of those communities, technology has been the difference between uh, individuals getting a service or getting nothing at all. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we, we don't assume that rural and remote providers are uh, not uh, updating. We, in fact, see many examples of high quality uptake. Can I, um, George, hopefully your, your sound is, is going okay. Can I come to you now? There was a question earlier on and, and it's probably the question on everyone's lips is where does the funding come from for technology in aged care? Okay, so let me check. How's the sound there? Excellent. You're coming through loud and clear. Excellent. Okay. Um, look, I think the funding is, is a very important question. And one of the things that I, when I answered Cam's question directly, I sort of said the key is for the funding for technology to be built into the standard funding, not a add-on funding for the purchase of technology by recognising that it's a cost associated with delivering care, be it in aged care, be it in primary health care. And, and one of the, the, the things we've seen in the past is that funding for technology has been an add-on. So it's been short-term add-on funding, which doesn't allow it to be sustainable. So we need to build it into the cost of our delivery of our service and realise that it's, a, it's a, a cost that needs to be implemented from day one, not something that's added on later. Uh, so, uh, look, anyone, um, please do jump in on this one if you just uh, unmute your microphones, I'm, I'm okay. But just a couple of um, sort of process questions. Again, we'll put this information that's been being put in the in the chat function. But, but Anne um, and probably Kate, just picking up on when the survey will be available um, and how our participants will get access to that survey. Anne, I'll come to you first and then Kate. Thanks. Um, the survey we plan to release on Friday the 1st of May. Uh, extensive work has been undertaken 
And I'd like to acknowledge the um, uh, contribution from both the project team, but also the expert reference team, and also department staff who are on um, line today. It's been a really collaborative effort to get uh, a survey that's really extensive to a user-friendly format. Um, and we'll be distributing that through a number of channels, through our own databases. Uh, the department will be sending out some information regarding the survey, uh, as will the peaks, both across industry uh, peaks and also uh, vendor peaks. Uh, we're using all uh, other networks that we can source and we'd encourage people online to distribute it. Uh, we also uh, want to uh, get a feel for uh, the crossover between aged care and disability uh, and we will be including some uh, questions that will be relevant for the disability sector as well. And it's important to note we've been collaborating closely with disability. Our ITAC conferences for the last three, four years have included a focus on disability uh, support and service delivery. Um, so we're keen to have um, as much exposure and uh, it's a short period of time, a six week period. So our close off date to meet that important um, deadline at the end of June is the 6th of June. So 1st of um, May to the 6th of June, the survey is running. Great, thanks Anne. And Kate, um, I'll just come to you, but can you also, um, just in terms of the report itself, will that be publicly accessible? You mean publicly acceptable, Aaron? Available or um, accessible? Accessible to the public. Yeah, I think um, George or Anne would need to answer that, but it's certainly, in terms of accessibility, going to be written in a very user-friendly and succinct style. It's not going to be war and peace, that's for sure. Good, good, excellent to hear. We like that. We like something that's uh, that's able to be easily digested, and, and and indeed, you know, really that focus on on customer and um, consumer is is so important in allowing people to um uh, to access the research as well. Making it non intimidating is always a good thing. So yeah, um, and just... normally, Aaron, there'll be you know, in all the references, we put um, hyperlinks where we can to the reports. That people don't have to go and chase them, they can just click on a link. Right. Um, Gavin, I'm going to come to you on this one and, and make you spokesperson uh, for the NBN because we've got a question here about uh, how robust the NBN is uh, and, um, you know, whether it's capacity to, you know, cope with, uh, with telehealth and all of the sort of digital transformation that's going on is, is there. How robust is the NBN? Uh, as a statement, I guess... Uh, there is a great, if I go back to the survey, I guess we are looking at organisation profiling and also having a look at what the effects of regional and remote is and uh, trying to establish what that great digital divide is. They'll also see, is there all maybe also advantage around competition in terms of how close you are with NBN? So we do actually ask specific questions. So as we all know, post COVID world and the use of telehealth, um, there are bandwidth limitations. Um, Anecdotal evidence at the moment is that there's still issues around Australia in terms of the underlying broadband infrastructure, but hopefully this survey will give some clarity and some, some sort of quantification or qualification around those statements. Excellent. Uh, can I, there's a, a question here, which is an important one, that, which came up at ITAC as well. Um, how much is dementia care identified as separate from aged care? Uh, and is it covered in disability care? Um, and then this is a three-part question. So um, how much is social, emotional, relational health part of your focus? So uh, who'd like to kick us off on, on that? I'm actually happy. Uh, George, you? George, I'll, George, I can you. give Let's my comment Let's come to George and then to Gavin. Um, so, so we're looking at care across the entire continuum, not just uh, aged care, residential aged care or just home care, but looking at the delivery of care services across the continuum of care from disability through to aged care, through to dementia care, and including up to, up to palliative care. Um, the key focus is obviously on looking at the role of technology. So we're not looking to redesign the, the entire care process, but we are looking to, to look at what role technology can play to improve that care process. And I think that's one of the important things. Gavin, do you want to add your comments to that? 
Uh, no, oh, I guess further to that, um, it's actually quite a good question. There is actually a question set in front of the expert reference panel at this present point in time, which actually, so yes, there are questions around those particular issues. And it's very good wording of that because we are actually looking at how those particular pieces of information may be captured within, a, within an electronic health record. So it is in the intent of the uh, project team to include uh, some survey instruments around that. Great. And then like some of that work can be captured through the case studies and in-depth analysis that we're working on. Uh, so we'd again encourage anyone to give us some feedback about uh, something that they want to highlight. We're hoping to highlight, as I mentioned earlier, both really you know leading practice in here, but the lessons learnt from uh, being agile in trying to implement different technologies and innovative approaches. Great. Isabel, can I um, just come to you on perhaps um, some of those research questions which uh, that, that you're already looking to, um, that you're looking for industry collaborators on? Well, the, the, these are research questions that were brought up at the last ITAC conference. Um, and um, the, the reason re, um, replaying them back today was just to really ask, are these still the issues that the industry wants to be working on? And if they are, um, let's, let's talk about how we've moved them forward. Um, that's probably a bit of a non-answer, uh, Aaron, but um, you know, it kind of depends how long is a piece of string. What, what is it that the, the those that have got a, an, an issue want um, uh, want to be working on, and how, how do we mobilise, um, if not those same questioners, others to help fund those projects? Uh, but I'd just like to come back to the the question that Janet Mitchell just asked about um, dementia. Um, you know, and I refer back, I uh, showed a research uh, matrix that the CRC uses to to look at projects. While we've got a residential and assisted aged care flagship, um, obviously it's you can't compartmentalise individuals or healthcare. And we actually have a number of projects in the, the sort of current disease management, um, changing health trajectories area that, that will pick up on, for example, cohorts of individuals with dementia. Um, so there are, there are going to be projects um, that might be of interest to some of the uh, audience today that aren't necessarily in that flagship. I mean, you can view those projects on the website um, uh, and I'd be very happy to, to link you up to uh, uh, the project leads of those other projects um, if that's of interest to you. Thanks, Isabel. Um, and this is probably uh, one for you or George or, or Gavin, really. Um, again, there's um, quite a, a focus on a number of the questions have talked about, you know, case studies and, and sort of how do um, providers uh, get involved in this process. So can we just highlight again, you know, if someone's wanting to get involved, what, what are the avenues that they've got? Um, obviously, there's the survey. What are the other sorts of points of contact that they can, they can access? Aaron, um, just to contact us directly uh, through the secretariat email address that uh, uh, the, um, Lisa and Georgie will place in the screen. Uh, to contact each of us individually and we'll uh, put our, each of our um, council emails up there. Uh, to um, be involved in the next uh, industry forum on the 1st of June. Uh, but during that period from the first, uh, from now when the survey is released to the first of uh, the sixth of June, we will be looking at uh, individual time with providers to um, uh, include in our research project. Um, so Kate and I are working on um, visiting, uh, remotely visiting, sorry, um, as services, uh, hearing from consumer groups around. Uh, their endeavours in this space as well, uh, working with the vendor peaks, but working also with our industry peaks. Uh, uh, so any of uh, uh, people who are interested, contact via our se secretariat, um, which uh, number will be put in your uh, chat pane, or contact us individually and we will certainly follow it up. We're very interested in um, your input and would encourage you to provide that. 
So that's, um, that's just gone up in the chat function uh, now, and So um, the email for the Secretariat is there. Obviously, that's a, a very easy way to get involved um, you know, in this research process, but in the roadmap overall, probably just a, um, a, probably a question in terms of you've highlighted some of the points along the way as we go through this process. Um, but as we head to ITAC 2021 in March, um, what is what are the sorts of um, involvement that you'd like to see from the sector, and what are the kind of the likely um, outcomes that you're pushing for um, by that kind of March um, deadline? Shall I give that one to George? George, you happy to take that one? Sure. So look, as we've said, now, this is a journey we're going on, and the benchmarking is an initial step to get an understanding of where the uh, industry is up to. But then we really have to then work together on developing a plan to implement on the improvements or recommendations come from the, from the report. So you know, we're, we're on a journey. This is a very important first step, um, but really it really is a collaborative process from now on. So we really need to work with the providers, with the consumers, with the government, with everyone who has a stake in this to develop solutions um, and make sure they're delivered in a, in a proper way with proper evidence around them. I mean, we, we've all heard, seen over the last couple of days, a, a flurry of non-evidence-based research being published in the United States by various people. We need to move into make sure we're doing a properly evidence-based distribution of what we're doing. So I think it's, that's the key focus is collaboration, evidence-based and proper outcomes for, for older Australians. And George, that's obviously why you're the chair, because that's probably a very good point for us to finish um, this forum on. So I want to thank uh, all of our participants. There's been so many great questions which we'll follow up after this. But I want to thank, um, thank Kate, thank Anne, Isabel, Gavin, um, George, all of our presenters um, today who have have done such a good job. And obviously a few technology issues there which we, we managed to get through. But to highlight again, that really the importance of this process, as George has highlighted, is the involvement of you, um, you the participants, the vendors, the, the people who are involved in this industry, um, and the questions that you're posing are, are very, very critical. Um, the survey, um, the Q&A uh, that has been posed throughout this will, will be answered you know, over the, the coming days and will be circulated again. Um, for more information on the Aged Care Industry Information Technology Council, the Care IT project, their research projects and further upcoming events, um, visit www.aciitc.com.au. Alternatively, as we've said, you can get in contact directly um, with the council emailing the secretary. All that, again, is up in the chat uh, function there. A reminder that the survey will be released on the 1st of May. We ask you all to complete that survey and to really circulate it through the networks. The more people that we get involved, the much stronger um, this process will, will be. The higher uptake we receive, the more informed the industry and in particular government can be in making positive changes. So again, I want to thank you all for this uh, online forum today and we look forward to your strong involvement in the future. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you.